So this is my new 3071 D5 that Mamba just came out with. Um, they do my unboxing video. I already have their 9-blade GTX in my car. And I'm uh, going to be upgrading the new turbine wheel they just released. So uh, I already know what's in the package, but just to show you guys. I already cut the straps off, but they come really nicely packed. They have some cool packing tape that they include with it. Mamba logo. And they pack stuff really nice, which is good to know because it's coming all the way from Taiwan. Now I'll show you what's inside. So they put the turbo inlet right in the top, nice and bubble wrapped. I'll open that up for you, show you what it looks like. Nice expanding foam packaging, keep everything secure. There it is. This is the provided line kit. Comes with all your AN fittings, oil drain, the hose, stainless braided oil feed, all the washers you need to make it all fit. Nicely packaged as well. Every turbo comes with a nice little booklet. Gives you information on the turbo, some stickers. One of my favorite parts that Mamba does, I don't see very often with other turbos on this platform, they provide you with all the balance information for your specific turbo. Uh, so it's pretty cool. You get to see exactly what yours did, you know, what they did to balance it and uh, make sure that it passed. Uh, pretty important, the kind of speeds that we're spinning these turbos to make the kind of boost pressure we need. So a little nifty feature. And also, actually, before I forget, I do put your manifold gasket and downpipe gasket in there as well. Turbo itself, they zip tie the bag for you to keep it nice and sealed during transport, make sure nothing gets in there. Okay, let's get the bag off. have it these are really cool looking turbos i like how they make their own outlet the mamba logo on it the laser etching serial plate these new d5 models have an inconel bearing cage it looks like they upgraded them from previous units see the machining looks real nice Gear GTX style core. And the fun part that's new with these models, that D5 turbine wheel, this is the split blade style. It's supposed to reduce back pressure by quite a bit and do good for top end power. Seen pretty good results from them so far. I'm excited to try it out on mine. And yeah, there you have it. These are uh, very nice turbos for the price. Hopefully between this and my new exhaust dump I'm making, I got a little bit of extra edge on top I'm looking for. Current turbo has been working great. <clears throat> I have a friend we're gonna be installing at his Golf R. So it'll still be around. I'll still get to watch its progress. Uh, excited to play around. This is the turbo inlet. Really nice piece I've had ones from Amazon and stuff before that have trouble fitting. These fit very nice. The PCV hose connects right to it without any fuss. Mama engraved on it. Very nice. Now for the foam part, the install. So what you want to do, turbo is going to mount on the car that way. This could be your oil drain here. So what I'm going to do, take the supplied gasket, the supplied fitting, these are going to go on the bottom, that's going to be what your oil drain tube attaches to. These are the supplied bolts, there's two of them.
and you're gonna to wanna to tighten those up good. All right, those are 13 millimeter. I got this all tightened down now. Probably gonna have to use a wrench. You can't really fit a socket next to the fitting here. And now that that's on, you gotta put the drain tube on. Now this, one big AN fitting. And when you install this, you kind of want the fitting to aim a little bit more towards the compressor housing side. Because when you're looking at the block, the return fitting is somewhere in this direction here. So if you have this a little bit more angled, the tube, the hose that they provide will be straighter to the stock block fitting. They give you plenty of extra hose, nice long piece to make your own. So you want to hand tighten this. Now my method for this, because it's hard to get a wrench in here to tighten that AN nut, I get it pretty snug with the fitting aiming more towards the turbine side. And once I get it hand tight, use the leverage of the fitting to really tighten that nut. It's on there nice and snug. This helps turn that nut and uh, I've done a couple like this. Should have no issues with it backing off. That's all there is to that. Right, well, you'll notice here, now I believe Mamba has remedied this issue. The recent ones I've seen haven't had this problem. Uh, this one's ordered a little while before that. But as you can see, the wastegate mounts here, the actuator, and goes to the arm. Now, this one has to be reclocked because as you see, the arm will get right in the way of the oil drain tube and hit it. So what we're gonna do is gently loosen not a whole lot, all the compressor housing bolts and all of the turbine housing bolts. You don't have to take them out, just loosen them up a little bit so we can rotate and reclock this to the correct orientation. All right, I got these housing bolts loose. They are eight millimeter on the compressor side, 13 millimeter on this side. I said only a turn or two, just enough so you could rotate it without taking everything apart. Now what you wanna do the way the wastegate rod will come out, you want it to be about 3 eighths of an inch or so, maybe a tad more on the inside bend of the return tube over to the wastegate flat. So it's easier if you have a wastegate actuator to mock up with it. In this case, I do not, but I'll use a extension for reference as I rotate it. This rod's obviously a little thicker than the wastegate rod. So I'm gonna set it so that this through the center is about touching the inside of the tube, knowing that the rod will have plenty of clearance. That looks pretty good right there. Turn this so you can see a little better. That's how that wastegate arm will sit, right under the bend. It looks close, but it's not. It won't touch as long as you have everything tightened down right. And that's where we're gonna set this one. All right, now we could start installing on the block. So I'm gonna do this on my motor outside of the car but a little bit less room inside the car, but I figured this would give you a better look at it. Uh, pretty easy to get to once you get everything out of the way when you're in the car as well. Now this was an LKQ engine, so some of these lines are cut, but normally you would originally unbolt, this is the oil feed line. You're gonna unbolt that, and they're pretty hard to get out of the block. Uh, it'll take quite a bit of wiggling, some vice grips, uh, some flathead screwdrivers prying and wiggling until you get it out. Um, but once you get that out, you're no longer going to need it. You now take the new AN style 
oil feed line fitting. Now what I do, I take a little dab of oil, lubricate it on the O-ring there so nothing gets squished. Now, you don't want to get it started a little bit on the block there. Now what I do, don't damage the threads, I take a 716 socket and I put that over the threads down to the base and use that to tap the fitting in. This way it pushes flush and you don't bend the bolt tab on the fitting. Set that on there. And that's it. Obviously put the bolt in. I have to pick one up since this is a junkyard motor. But once you have that fitting on, you can go ahead and screw on the supplied filter. This has a screen in it. It goes in line to the oil feed to make sure the turbo is always getting clean oil. You can go ahead and thread this on there. Now these are aluminum fittings. You don't want to go too tight. Good and snug is perfect. Now you can take the supplied braided oil line. This 90 degree fitting is going to go on the turbo. The straight fitting goes on the filter. Go ahead and screw that on. By the way, the filter is an 18 millimeter. This is a 14, I believe. Same thing as the filter, nice and snug. You don't want to go nuts. Now we can focus on the turbo itself. Now I have to take this back apart before the engine goes in the car. So I'm not going to bother putting the gasket on. This is just for the sake of the video. But normally, obviously you put your gasket right there. Slip the turbo on. Gonna put these nuts here to hold it for now. And you are one step closer to getting this thing on. Now from the top, I should know when you're working in the car, you're going to have to remove this coolant hard line. All these spool valves have to come out. For the harness up here, you have to disconnect your high pressure fuel pump, this sensor here, and the cam sensors on the front. So you can pull that whole harness up out of your way and have room. Now what we're gonna do, take the supplied oil feed line for the turbo, the small copper washer. So there you go there, tighten that one up. Now when you do the final install, that 90 degree angle that you have from earlier will go up around the back of the motor and onto there. You could orient it however you want, tighten it down, but that is how your feed setup goes. Now on the back side, put your oil, or I'm sorry, your antifreeze return on. It's that Y-shaped fitting, supplied bolt, and there is a copper washer on each side of the bolt. You want to orient it so that those turn in towards the block.
just like that. And your heater hose lines are going to connect directly to those. Come around to the <clears throat> front side again. This is where this front coolant line goes. Another bolt, another two copper washers. It's going to sit on it just like that and connect to that hose right there. Now I can't connect this one because LKQ cut the hose, but I'll get a new piece of hose for that for the final install. And there you have it. That is how everything should look when you're done installing. I hope this uh, outside of the car made it easier to see and understand how these fittings go. Your oil feed, your coolant feed in return. Down to your filter and feed line. The only thing I'm leaving out of this video that's left up here that spot right there that is where the oil return tube is factory now when you pull the rubber hose off the factory line you could reuse the piece that's in this block here already the metal tube and all you do is cut a piece of that length that mamba provided of the rubber hose to the tube to the tube on the block you just measure then once you get the right measurement These are two supplied clamps, clamp it on. Very simple. If I had a uh, OEM return tube to put back on this motor, I'd do it for you. But you usually end up only using a couple inches of the hose. You've got plenty extra. So if you butcher the first cut, not a big deal. Any of you guys have any questions? I've done multiple of these installs. Most of them in cars. This is the first one I've done outside the car for display purposes. It's actually a motor that's going in a friend's car. I've got to do a swap on soon. Uh, but yeah, any, uh, any comments, feel free. I'll try to answer any questions I can. Uh, thanks for watching.